Would you ever tell anyone that they weren't talented enough to do something professionally? I would never tell someone that they're not good enough. Never. Because I had somebody tell me that in high school. And um, what I have learned working in Hollywood for now, it's like 13 years. Talent is only one piece of the puzzle. It's one piece. There are so many other qualities that you need to succeed outside of talent. And I think that if you care enough, talent is always something that you can work on. You know, craft, you get better through practice. And so you can always be in class. You can always be working with a coach. Like there's so many ways to get better in terms of your talent. Um, and from a law of attraction standpoint, the law of attraction doesn't care if you're talented or not. And I hate to say that because I don't want to discourage people from taking their craft seriously, but have you ever watched a TV show and thought, ooh, that acting wasn't very good? Or that writing was, ooh, terrible, you know, or listen to a song on the radio and thought, I feel like I could sing better than that person. You know, my point is, is that talent is just one piece. And to me, that is not a deterrent if you're not the most amazing at your craft yet. I think that you can still win. I think you can still succeed. Now, from an integrity standpoint, I think you should be working on your craft, you know, from an integrity standpoint, I think you should care about your craft and you should work on it and you should practice. You know, I think some of the greatest artists in history are people that did it all the time. You know, they practiced all the time. So I think you should absolutely be working on your craft. Um, I just think that there are so many other qualities that you need to have out. Like I talk about this in my book where I say, you know, going back to Crystal even, you know, if you are cold emailing representation and you're trying to get representation, if you email 20 people and they either all say no or just don't even respond, your talent is not going to get you to keep going. It's your perseverance. It's your drive. It's your desire and your ambition, right? There's so many other qualities that you need to keep going in a moment like that. So I think that your talent, it only gets you so far. And if the talent is the only thing you have, it will most likely be a hobby and not a career. So I, I, just, I just will never tell somebody that. You know, when, when someone told it to me, it's happened twice actually to me, and it was really soul crushing. You know, even in design school, when I, I tell the story, it's the first story I tell in the book, so sorry to spoil this, but, um, you know, when I first got to art school or to the design program at the college I was going to, I did really well on the first project and the second project I almost failed. And the teacher said, oh, I guess you just got lucky on that first one. I will never forget that. I mean, I bawled my eyes out. I ran to the bathroom and cried and, and I just thought, wow, like my mentor, this person who's supposed to teach me how to be good is telling me that anything I've done well so far is chalked up to luck. And that was like so soul crushing for me. And then I went on to have a pretty incredible graphic design career in one of the hardest industries to work in in Hollywood. And I've worked on over 30 television shows. So I ended up transferring schools uh, because it just, it wasn't, that style of teaching wasn't, for it didn't feel good for my growth. You know, I didn't feel like I was learning anything or getting better. And I just, I don't like using fear as a teaching tactic, but the point is, is that I was told that I essentially wasn't good. And I still had an incredible dream career after that. You know, I think that I got better. I learned how to get better and teachers told me how to get better, you know, and they taught me and they mentored me and, and I got better. And plus I had all these other qualities that go so much, so far beyond talent. Were they trying to use like a tough love style of like tearing you down then to build you back up sort mm -hmm. of thing? Was it that? No, it was really, you know, no, because like, I don't think there's really anything wrong with tough love. I mean, I guess delivery <laughs> could be debated, but um, tough love is really like telling you things that you, you need, you know, you need to hear that you might not want to hear, but will help for your growth. And so for me, that program was using fear as a teaching tactic. And so like, 
and I, I know that a lot of the other students felt the same way. We were kind of scared to go to class. What is the teacher going to think? What are they going to say? We were so much fear. Um, you know, even with that assignment, um, I didn't get any notes as to like what could have been better. And so I didn't, so I'm like, oh, I'm almost failing this project, but I don't actually know how to make it better. I just feel bad about myself and I'm scared because it's te like this teacher's, um, you know, like instilling fear in me essentially in the way that she taught. And she did that throughout the whole semester. So I just, I didn't even like at the end of the day, I feel like I was learning. I was like, I want to be a good graphic designer, but I don't know if I'm learning that here. Um, and it was interesting because almost every student felt the same way, but I was the only one that left. So again, a very teachable moment for myself, you know, but yeah, I don't, I don't love, some people like that teaching tactic to use fear as a teaching tactic. I, I don't, for me, it's not productive. I, I feel like I can learn how to do better and be better without being afraid. Um, I feel like it doesn't create like or foster a safe environment to take risks and fail. So that was my personal experience. But then how can we deliver a message to someone without being, um, without protecting them too much where they're almost blinded because we're not giving them the real, I, I don't know. I mean, there, there's like yes people. Yeah. And a lot of times I'm sure when people reach a certain level, they're surrounded mm -hmm. by yes people. And I don't know if that's good or bad. I probably some enable them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think yes, surrounding yeah. yourself with yes men, I don't think is ever mm -hmm. good, at least for growth. Yeah, sure. I, I think that, I mean, feedback, it's totally okay to give feedback. You know, um, that teacher was more like, you bad. You know, it, it wasn't like constructive feedback that I felt I could learn from. So, um, you know, the art school that I transferred to was very tough, very tough. Um, but I never felt bad about myself. I don't know. It was just constructive feedback. It was like, well, this isn't working so well here, but if you do X, Y, and Z, I think it would work better. And here's why. And then I would go, oh, that would make this better. Let me do that. You know, then I'm excited about making changes because I'm learning why it would make it better, which I think is really important. And, you know, as artists, <coughs> it's important to not attach your self-worth to your work. Um, you know, your work can be a separate thing. Um, yeah. What did going to that second art school that you said was very competitive teach you? Um, In terms of competition, I should clarify. Well, I, I wouldn't say it was necessarily competitive, although there was, well, there was a little bit of a sense of competition. They, they ranked the top five portfolios when we graduated, so you know, there was something about like, oh, are you top five? And, and, and I wasn't in the top five, but I had a professor tell my mom, oh, she would have been in the top seven if we did seven. She was in our top seven. And, and it's like, like, but what, what does that actually mean? Like I've lived such a different career. You know, I went off to design graphics for television. Other people are doing other things. So I, I think that, I think what it taught me is that it's good to strive to be your best but you don't necessarily have to strive to be the best because I think the best is going to be subjective no matter you know where you are, what pool you're in. So, you know, it's it's good to just strive to be your best. You know, do better than you did last time. You know, see your own growth and then let that lead to your own path. You know, even looking, sometimes I would compare myself to um, where my other um, peers are now, you know, with their careers. Or, you know, we had a couple students from our school, um, one that is, she graduated the year before me, I believe, year or two before me, and she became a pretty famous graphic designer. She's very well known. She's a very big following. And the teachers love that and would always point out, you know, talk about her and use her as an example, of course. And then it's like, oh, and I'm always trying to, like, we would joke about her name in class, my peers and I, because it was like, oh, we're never going to live up to that person to our in our teacher's eyes. And so I, I guess I learned in that sense about, you know, like, like, stop. I, I want to tell myself that even now, because even now with my book, I'm like still trying to impress my professors. And I graduated like 13 years ago and I'm still like, do they think I'm successful? Do they like what I'm doing? Um, and yeah, but I, I think that lesson I learned there was really like, 
let yourself be on your own path and, you know, just compare yourself to where you were before and stop trying to be or do what these other people have. Is competition good in that it prepares you for the real world? Because in the real world, there's no, oh, you did great. And oh, you get a gold, gold star. It's usually much more brutal than that. And it can be very cold, unfortunately. It's, yeah, mm. definitely. I, I just have a slightly different belief about competition. I believe there's room for everybody. And that might mean something different. It doesn't necessarily mean there's room for everybody in the same exact seat. Right. But I do believe that we all deserve to live our dreams in our own way. So um, it can be competitive in the real world or even in school. But that doesn't mean that you can't live out your dreams. You know, someone beating you out for a job or an opportunity or something doesn't mean that you can't still live a fulfilling life or achieve your dreams. I mean, there were jobs that I did not get. You know, I interviewed I've only interviewed like four times maybe for a TV show. Most of the jobs I got came from connections that I built over time. The only times that I've interviewed, I've never gotten the job. Never. And that didn't mean that I couldn't still have a really great career. I mean, someone else got that job over me, right? So in that sense, in the competition, I failed there or whatever. Someone beat me out. But there was another show for me. There were more opportunities for me, you know? So I really believe, and Chelsea Handler talks about this too. You know, she says like, there's room for everyone. Can you talk about the other time that someone said you wouldn't be able to do something or succeed? Yeah, technically they didn't say the words, but it was implied and it was something that I'll never forget. In high school, I was very involved in drama and chorus. So I was secretary of the drama club. I was president of the chorus. That was my life. I loved singing. I loved acting. Not the best at dancing, <laughs> but I would, I would do what was required. But that was my life. You know, I lived theater and I did pretty well. You know, I was up for the lead several times. I understudied the lead my sophomore year. I was actually up for a lead. It was between me and one other girl my freshman year, which you know, it was a big deal in the politics of high school that being a freshman up for a lead. And um, I, you know, I, I did well enough to be decent. You know, I wasn't the star of our high school or anything like that. I wasn't in that like top elite group that was like really phenomenal, but I was pretty good. I was good enough to, you know, get a leading role in a musical once and, and some other big parts and other opportunities. And I loved theater. I, I really loved acting. I was more enamored with Hollywood than Broadway, but I really loved it. And like I said, I did a summer program at UCLA and there was a summer theater intensive. So I actually went to UCLA for acting um, when I was still in high school. And when we started applying for colleges, I didn't apply to any acting programs. And a lot of my friends did. Um, and I, I started discovering my love for graphic design during that time. And so I was feeling pulled toward graphic design. And so that was really what I was working towards getting into for college. But I was still in the midst, you know, I, I was still in the midst of theater. And I sat down with my, the theater teacher one day, and it was just the two of us in a classroom. And I looked at her and I said, you know, the reason why I'm not pursuing acting in college is because I know I'm not good enough. And there was like that little girl inside of me that so badly wanted her to say, you can do it, you're good enough, like give it a try. If that's really what you wanna do, go for it. And she didn't. And she just sat silent and didn't say anything. And to me, that was confirmation, you know, of her saying, yeah, well, you're, you're not the star of our program and it's only the stars that really go on. And, you know, that was so many years ago. And I, I remember that moment so clearly still all these years later, I, it really had an impact on me. And it was one of the reasons, you know, why I didn't pursue acting. And now, you know, 
I actually believe that everything worked out how it was supposed to. You know, I don't still want to be an actor. Even when I work with my actor clients, I have no desire. I'm not longingly looking at their careers. I was supposed to be a graphic designer. That's That became my true love. Um, but the lesson that I learned there that I, I wanted to, I feel like was one of the reasons I wanted to become a coach is because I think there are so many artists that have those moments where they're maybe told they're not good enough or they think it themselves. And I said in the book that I wish the teacher saw in me, although I really need to take full responsibility and say, I wish I saw it in myself. But I, I, I think I wish the teacher saw in me that I had all these other qualities that could potentially lead to success in a career like Hollywood, right? I, I was already showing leadership skills, right? I was secretary of the drama club. I was, I was president of a 250 person chorus and, you know, worked my way up there. And so I, I already had so, I, I was like a self-starter, you know, like I had a positive outlook. I was determined and ambitious. Like I had so many qualities that could help me succeed even if I wasn't the absolute star. You know, and even if I didn't maybe get into one of the top desired theater programs, like there's theater programs in countries all you know, or in schools all around the country. Um, I don't know. I, I just think that, you know, I, I, t I own that for myself now that I wish I saw it in myself. But I don't think at that moment I understood that so much more than talent was required to succeed. And now looking at like the people who did, you know, pursue theater in college from that program in high school, I only one or two of them is actually doing it. So, um, and I was still able to create, you know, a pretty great career for myself in Hollywood and break in when I didn't know anybody. Um, and I and I didn't do that because I was this phenomenal designer. I did it because I had all these other qualities that helped me break in. And we don't know someone's motives behind why they say something too, or don't say something. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, and it, and it could have been her own. It doesn't really matter, I, I think. But you know, it was just it was just a moment for me that I, I just want to help people not feel that way because I feel like if there's a dream in your heart, you can pursue it. You know, Jack Canfield has this quote that I always say, where he says, "You wouldn't be given a dream unless you had the capacity to fulfill it." And I really believe that. I really believe that you wouldn't be given a dream unless you had the capacity to fill it. Doesn't mean right in this moment when you're 17 years old that you have all the tools and are able to fulfill it now, right? But, but it, it creates potential. Like it says that the potential is 100% there.